Hi folks, and welcome back to another tutorial. Today we'll create a simple animation of microfluidic droplet formation in Blender using geometry nodes. The main ingredient for this effect are metaballs. If you haven't used them before, they are non-mesh based objects that have a special feature that allows them to merge with other metaballs that are within some distance of influence. So this makes them ideal for illustrating droplets being split off from some flowing liquid. So let's get started. Start in a default scene and don't delete the default cube. We're going to be using this later to hold our geometry node setup. I'm going to come and set the render engine to EV. This is just so that the animation playback later runs more smoothly in rendered view. So first, Shift A, come to Metaball and add a ball. Come down to the data properties, set the resolution in the viewport to 0.2 and the rendered resolution to 0.1. Set the influence threshold to 1.2. And now let's just scale our Metaball down by pressing S and I'll scale it down to 0.2. I want aqueous droplets, so I'm going to give it a basic water material. Come down to the Material Properties tab, create a new material, and let's call it Water. Set the base color to something light blue, roughness to zero, set the IOR to 1.33, open the Transmission tab and set the weight to one. And very important, come down to the Settings tab and make sure Screen Space Refraction is enabled. Let's just check how this looks in Rendered View. And then we have a water droplet made of a metaball. Next, come back to the default cube and let's go ahead and give it a new geometry node tree. We'll create both the bulk liquid and the droplets themselves in the same node tree. So let's start with creating the bulk bit of liquid. Disconnect the input geometry, add a curve line node and set the endpoint to something along the Y direction. For example, I'm going to set it to eight and you can leave the start value as 0, 0, 0. Connect a resample curve node and set the count to something like 20. Add an instance on points node and connect the instances output to the group output. Then come to the outliner and just drag the metaball by clicking once, holding and dragging into the node tree to import it as object info. Set it to relative as instance and take the geometry output of that and plug it into the instance socket. You'll see at the moment with as instance selected, you don't get very much happening. And that's because the default cube that we're creating this geometry node setup in needs to be able to recognize the metaball as instances, which it currently doesn't. So what we're going to do is first, we're going to parent the metaball to the cube. First click the metaball in the outliner, then click the cube. And then we're both selected, control P and set parent to object. And so now the metaball is parented to the cube. Next, select the cube and come down to the object properties. Under instancing, change from none to vertices. And now the cube can register the metaball as instances. And so now we have a bunch of metaballs creating a continuous blob of water. And you can see how this is working by toggling the count on the resample curves. If I bring the count down lower, you'll see that you just have individual metaballs, but then they see each other at a certain distance and start to merge. And we're going to crank this up to make sure that they sort of overlap and you just get a continuous chunk of liquid. Let's now create the train of droplets. We want to be able to animate these droplets moving along a line in a loop, so we don't have to spawn an infinite number of droplets coming out. So first, add another curve line node. Set the start point to coincide with just before where the first curve line ends. So this one currently ends at y equals eight. So I'm going to start it off at somewhere around y equals 7.5. X and Z are still zero. And then on the end point, I'm going to set the y value to wherever I want this train of droplets to end. So I'm going to set it to something like 20. Next, add a curve to points node, a sample curve node, and a set position node. Connect the curve line to the curve input for both the curve to points and the sample curve node. Connect the points output from the curve to points into the set position geometry and the position output from the sample curve 
into the position of the set position. Next, add a integer and an index node. Connect the integer node to the count socket of the curve to points. This value basically sets the number of droplets that's going to be in the droplet train at any time. So let's set that to something non-zero for now, something like eight. Next, you want to add a bunch of math nodes. The first one, set it to divide and divide the index by the integer that we set in the integer node. Give yourself a little bit more space and duplicate this math node twice. Set the first one to add and connect the divide output into the first add socket. Change the second to truncated modular. Connect the add output into the first socket and set the second value to one. Take the value output and connect it into the factor of the sample curve. We'll come back to what all of these nodes do very shortly. After the set position, look for another instance on points and connect the metaball object that we imported before into the instance socket of this instance on points too. Now I'm going to join the bulk water and the droplets together with a join geometry node. Drop that into the node tree, combine the two instance on points, and there you'll see we have the bulk water here and the droplets to the right. Let's briefly come back to the series of math nodes we added earlier. So first the add node here basically adds a value to the factor of each point on the curve line and that allows us to move the points and therefore the droplets on those points along the curve. If you toggle the add value here, we can basically move the droplets along the curve. I'm not exactly sure why we have to go negative here on the add, but you get the point. And you'll notice that the curve basically hosts a certain number of droplets and after the droplets move a certain point, it sort of disappears at the end. That's because we have this second node, the truncated modulo, which ensures that the factor value that gets fed into the sample curve node always remains between zero and one. So it allows it to loop along the length of the curve. So if you want to animate this droplet motion, all you have to do is add a driver into this math node. Type hashtag and then frame and then divide it by some value. The larger this value, the slower the droplets will move. I'll set it to something like 200. And now if you press play, you'll see that droplets now move along the curve based on the frame. So we can now animate the droplets moving. In the animation at the start, I also set up some microfluidic channels to house the aqueous phase and also an oil phase in a cross geometry. I'll leave that to you to create for yourself if you want. But besides that, that's basically it for this tutorial. A really simple setup for creating an animation of microfluidics creating droplets in Blender. I hope you enjoyed following along and learned something new. Please leave a like and a comment if you found it useful. Subscribe for more content and I will see you all next time. Bye bye for now.